All right, so did you stay up last night to watch the GOP debate? If not, don't worry, we got you covered. The stage was less crowded than you have seen it before. Yeah, we had Donald Trump, Ben Carson, Senators Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, Governors Chris Christie, Jeb Bush, and John Kasich. They were all there. And some of the candidates, candidates that were missing, Carly Fiorina, Rick Santorum, and Mike Huckabee, uh, they were on earlier in the under debate, uh, undercard debate. Senator Rand Paul, though, he skipped out altogether. He didn't even didn't even show. show. No. Didn't even show. All right. So we want to bring in our friend John Dadian, our political analyst, to kind of break down last night. Good morning, John. Good morning. Okay. So. I, I think the the it, it's obvious at this point that the bromance between uh, Donald Trump and Ted Cruz is done. Well, it's over. Pretty clear. Pretty clear. You've heard me say before, the one thing when you're in a debate, especially when it's a large field, your main priority is to make no mistakes. And I think we saw that last night. Nobody really flubbed, but nobody really hit it out of the ballpark. So mm -hmm. everybody kind of held their own, more or less. I think the big... Uh, even though it was the undercard, I think the big mistake was Rand Paul. I mean, what, what was up. he thinking? Because what you do, if you appear, you can use that in so many ways. Mm -hmm. You can take your clips, use it on your website. To, you will at least be mentioned as Carly's being mentioned this morning, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he was thinking by saying, I'm taking my ball and going home. What do you think won the debate? No, nobody, nobody won it. Uh, they all, they all made their points equally. A couple, you know, I wasn't happy with a couple comments that were made that I don't think helped them per se, but I don't think anybody won it in the normal sense of the term. Um, the the Trump Cruz, there were two main kind of attacks on each other. The first was the Ted Cruz born in Canada issue. The other was Trump and Cruz, Cruz attacking Trump over the New York values. Who won in each of those attacks? Marginally Trump, uh, because again, I think the people are starting to click on to some of these things are state sound bites, so they're ready for it, uh, clearly and all that. I think really one of the big issues that's going on, Ted Cruz, and of course his campaign, is surprised how much of the Trump birther issue is, is resonating. And it is resonating. And it's and still it's, resonating. And he it's, can't let it go. I mean, Especially yeah. in Iowa, where yeah. Cruz was surging. And so what Trump did is he kind of stunted that surge and the cruise people are going nuts about it and they can't mm -hmm. figure out how to come out of it. You know, we talked a little bit about this off camera. Do you think it was a mistake for Ted Cruz to attack New Yorkers or, mm -hmm. you know, describe the, what New the New York values are? Oh, absolutely, because again, the position that you're auditioning for is to be the leader of all the people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we see our local mayor, Kevin Faulkner, his theme is One San Diego. Mm -hmm. So uh, New York is part of this country, uh, last yeah. time I checked. And uh, I think that's going to, what happens is I think that's going to come back to haunt him in the long run. Possibly, for example, if he ever was a nominee, it would haunt him in the general. All right, um, let's talk about Iowa, New Hampshire, you know, that, that New York values kind of line of attack that Ted Cruz is going on and it seems to not be getting off of because he has used that line of attack in the past you know that might resonate in places like Iowa and New Hampshire it might you know in those in those non New York places um, but what ahead of Super Tuesday ahead of Iowa and New Hampshire who is gonna come out the winner in all of this well, we don't know yet, of course. Mm. It's, it's still, it, re it really is still a horse race. Clearly, some people are looking. I mean, but Trump's poll numbers are up in all those places. Well, specifically, if you look, of course, we're putting so much um, uh, emphasis on Iowa, New Hampshire. But if you look historically, I like history, yeah. I like trivia. Um, many people who win, Rick Santorum won New uh, Iowa last La yeah. la last time around and look where he ended up so historically it doesn't necessarily guarantee hmm. you to be the nominee if you win Iowa New Hampshire and you did mention after New Hampshire you do have uh, South Carolina which is important right but then on that Super Tuesday which is a short three weeks after right. Iowa you've got more than a dozen states a lot of them southern states and that's why a lot of people are saying Trump doesn't have to win Iowa New Hampshire he has to come in well second or third and then when he goes into Super Tuesday on March 1st uh, he could clean up and clean the board and that would give him what we call the mighty mo, the momentum. You know, I found a couple of things that stood out to me at the debate. The exchange between Marco Rubio and, um, and Chris Christie. That was pretty testy, number one. Number two, the discussion of who would make a better president, senators versus governors. That came up last night again. 
The conventional wisdom by historians is that it is governors because, again, the uh, the biggest point is that it's an executive branch type thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, as a senator has to do, go around and get 51 votes, uh, et cetera. But that, that's marginal. We've had great governors. We've had great senators. You know, uh, you know, when Obama ran against McCain, it was the first time in 40 years that we had senators running. Really quick, before I let you go, what, what are the, you know, establishment Republicans, how are they feeling about the likelihood that Trump could be the nominee. The re established Republicans. Nervous Nellies. Uh, very scared about Trump, a little scared about Cruz, uh, et cetera. And that's why, and it gets back to your question, Elizabeth, that's why they, the establishment wants people such as Rubio and Christie to stay in mm -hmm. in case Trump implodes, right. in, in case there needs to be a deal crafted, some type of negotiation, whatever that may be. They want them to stay in. And that's why you see right. this field not shrinking yet. But you will see it shrinking quite quickly in the next few weeks. All right, John, always great to see you. Thank Thank you so Thanks, much. John. We're all, a couple weeks away from Iowa. Can you believe it already? On a different track, I'd like to say God bless our Marines in Hawaii. Yes, oh, yes. Absolutely. absolutely. Thank, Thank you, John. You.